Hey everybody, this is Jeff with Junior Hockey Advisor. I want to take a time to address uh, fairly quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, this is the issue of uh, teams that are not in the epicenters, uh, outlier teams, outlier programs. This is really looking at the you know 03, 04 age group for the most part. Uh, a lot of times what happens when you're not in a uh, traditional market, the Detroit's, the Boston's, you know, the, uh, the, the Pittsburgh's, the, uh, the Minnesota's, you know, large Minnesota metro areas, you, you get into a situation where you're playing on uh, U16, U18, and the enticement of playing juniors comes into play. This is where I have to caution you and to say, be very careful when it comes to playing tier three junior hockey at an early age. And there's a few things why. First of all, Ice time. Junior teams carry 25 to 30 players, period. Okay. If they're not carrying those, they're looking to carry those. If, in other words, uh, if they've only got 21 or 22 players at the tier three level, they're looking for other players. It's a budgetary issue. Teams have to carry that. So if I'm going to skate on a team that normally has, uh, you remember in the USA now, uh, you can skate 21 players on a junior team. Uh, meaning you can have two goalies dressed and still have 19 players dressed, okay? Now, the normal U16, U18 team maxes out at 20 players, but there's a, oftentimes they're, they're skating less than that. So if I'm a player that's getting, uh, you know, ice time every third or fourth shift uh, playing 16 and 18 hockey, you know, why would I want to go to a team that I can see minimal ice time as a 16 or 17-year-old and also be in the stands. I could literally be in the stands, either sitting on the bench or in the stands, even as a quality player. It makes no sense as far as a development path versus playing tier one, 16, 18 hockey, especially 18 hockey. Tier one hockey will get you the exposure you need much more than, a, than a, especially if you're in a remote market. If you're in the Western states, and I'm talking about the uh, the anything from you know the other side of Iowa when you start getting west into the New Mexico's you start getting into the Colorado's you start getting into the Oregon's and the Washington's of the world those are the states that have the least amount of exposure at the junior level for players now you get ACHA college club exposure but you're going to get that at tier one too my point is take advantage of U18 hockey lower cost closer to home practicing and living at home there's no billet fees yet and if you're you're going to make it from there you're going to move on to a, a junior program potentially at the tier two level and potentially at the the uh, tier one level which is ushl or it's the uh, the north american hockey league besides that u18 tier one is also a launching pad to get into the cghl the canadian junior hockey leagues especially if you're up in the, uh, the, the, the northeast, or excuse me, excuse me, the northwest of the United States, where you already know what the Alberta League is like. You already know what the, the BCHL is like. Those are awesome opportunities, tuition-free hockey, uh, billet-free hockey. So you're playing for free close enough to home where you know you, your parents can make a few trips up to see you. Still a few hours, but they can make some trips up to see you. Versus moving to the east to play Tier 3 Juniors, I'm an advocate of junior hockey. I mean, my my business is talking about avenues to junior hockey. But a smart avenue is much, much different than a quick reaction, knee-jerk jump to juniors too soon. If you jump to juniors too soon at the Tier 3 level, it could be, A, there's a, there's a few things. One is, the reason why a lot of these decisions are made is because you start seeing everything fragment. You leave 16 hockey and go to 18 and go, Oh, Bobby's leaving and Tommy's leaving and Sam's leaving. Oh my gosh, what are we left with? That's not the way to look at this. I get it. You, 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 you think that the whole world, everybody's making decisions and you're not a part of it. It's, uh, there's a lot of things spinning, a lot of things going in different directions. I get it. But time and money. If I'm going to spend time, I want to make sure it's quality time that I'm developing and it's going to move me to the next level. Tier 3 juniors cannot always promise that. Okay, if you're still looking to ascend to a higher level and to play quality D3 or D1 hockey, meaning your upper third of the D3 level or any level of the D1 side, 
you want to play out your U18 if you're not already getting offers to the USHL, the BCHL, the AJHL, or the North American Hockey League. The second part of that is money. If I'm going to play, why would I pay a billet fee and pay for a team that I am only speculating that I'm going to get time on? Especially if I'm a goalie. If I'm a goalie playing Tier 3 juniors as a young player and there's two other goalies on the team and I'm the third goalie, where you know, am I going to get better in practices? Remember, Tier 3 is you know, Tier three hockey. and I, I'm a former Tier 3 junior owner for multiple franchises. If I'm a young player, I can't see breaking through two other guys that are veterans ahead of me unless I'm a superstar. Now, if I'm a superstar, why aren't the offers to the USHL or to the North American League or the BCHL or the AGHL coming in? So why not craft that skill at home, pay less? The money side of it's going to be less with a U18 team. You know, if you're getting four or five hours practicing with a U18 team, I can tell you right now, there are some junior programs that practice 50 minutes a day and they practice three times a week. Okay, they might say that they're practicing uh, X amount of hours a week, but the reality is, you know, once you're there, it's it's very difficult to make sure. So you've got to really do your homework to make sure you're in the right program. I am not anti tier three hockey. I'm anti jumping to tier three hockey before you need to. Okay, it is an avenue and it's a viable avenue for a lot of great hockey players. But if you have an 18 opportunity that's there, local, where you're living at home, it's better. If you're paying less money, it's better. If you're getting more ice time, it's better. And if it continues to get you exposure, it's better. So across the board, really strongly consider staying at 18 coming out of 16s versus making that jump. I know this came across a little bit preachy, but I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And if you have any questions at all, juniorhockeyadvisor.com, please go there. Junior Hockey Advisor on Facebook and YouTube also. Have a great day. I hope this video finds you well.